Hi folks, can we machine this part in a single cam operation? Why would you want to do that? We had a customer who, to be honest, they don't necessarily care about cam. They just want to get their part made. They've got access to a makerspace or a machine. They don't have time to really learn fusion. They started playing around with it. I'm going to walk you through how we can do that in one operation and keep it simple. There are some drawbacks. Stick around for the end and we'll walk through it. Otherwise, welcome to a Fusion Friday. So they had started by playing with the contour. Not a bad attempt at a first operation. We are, however, are going to make use of the adaptive operations. There's two of them in Fusion 360. In this case, we want the one underneath the 3D adaptive. It's gonna do two key things. The 3D adaptive, even though there's not really any three-dimensional surfacing or complex contours on this part, we want the, the adaptive to be able to handle what you consider in the industry to be two and a half D machining. So basically to handle these different features at different height planes. The other reason that we want to use the adaptive is in the 3D is that it recognizes the solid model. What do I mean by that? Well, if it, under a 2D adaptive, I have to pick things and, and basically the toolpath starts at nothing. And as I start selecting things, it adds to the toolpath. 3D adaptive, take a look. We'll do a new setup. I'll just right click a mine and duplicate it to start over. We'll make it the active one by highlighting the radio button and I'll delete my example. 3D adaptive clearing, 1 16th inch end mill. Watch this. Just click OK. So again, it's looking at your solid model and it's doing all the hard work for you. The problem, we don't have the part finish machine. Take a look. If we go to simulation and I go to end of toolpath, not quite there. Well, why not? First thing that jumped out is the little slot area. So if I right click on adaptive, what we're gonna do now is walk through the most common settings. This can seem overwhelming, especially if you're new to Fusion 360. The majority of what I wanna do is going to be in the passes tab. And in this case, the minimum cutting radius, let's reduce that. If you let your mouse hover up, you can see in this great little graphic, it shows that by reducing the minimum cutting radius, it's gonna let it get into smaller areas and smaller corners. So let's basically take that out of play by reducing it to 1,000th of an inch. Here's the other big one. Adaptive is actually not a good strategy for what we're about to do, or not the preferred strategy, but that doesn't mean it may not be okay. In this case, it's probably a heat sink. It's, a, it's okay. The reason is that adaptive is going to potentially leave faceting on the uh, edges, of, certainly of curves. It's also potentially going to cheat, and it may actually gouge slightly into your solid model, subject to the tolerance and some other complicated things. But if you're just trying to get this part made, and you know your other option may be to 3D print it, you're not going to have a problem with adaptive in most examples. So we're going to turn that off for now. Let's just click OK. Don't do too much. One or two things at most. Click OK. Get a toolpath. That way, if you made too many changes and it, the toolpath errors out on you, you aren't sh uncertain what did it, what uh, ruined it. That actually took a minute to calculate, and the reason is it's actually creating an STL file, which is pretty crazy. Let's say I want to speed that up a little. One thing you can do to help, under passes, increase the tolerance. Let's say in this case we'll just increase it to 10 thou and click OK. Even if I want to reduce it later, this can help me iterate toolpaths more quickly while I'm experimenting. If you're not sure if it's hung, expand the arrow and you can watch the little file size grow. Sometimes it looks like it's stuck on a percentage, but when you see the file name growing, you think, okay, just wait a second. Simulation is your friend. Simulate, fast forward to the end. And we've got a problem, which is that it's not going all the way down to the bottom of your model. So in this case, what I'd recommend is starting with a piece of stock that's the same size as what you want in the end. In this case, we've got a piece of material that's a little bit bigger. Right click on our setup, edit, and under stock, we can keep it as relative size box, but instead of having additional stock, I'll say no additional stock. The toolpath isn't going around the outside now. Simulate. We still, though, aren't going all the way through the bottom. And this is a really tricky one that would be difficult to figure out. And the reason that we're not is our Heights tab is okay. 
the bottom height. That means how low do you want the cam software to machine or look? And it's set at the bottom. Now you might sometimes want to add an offset to drop that a little bit lower, say negative 0.01. But in that case, that's not the problem. It's under linking. So linking has to do with how the tool moves between work areas. So when it's doing this little circle here, how does it move when it comes up and goes over into this slot? And in this case, it has to do with this thing called the ramp. We click cancel and take a look. See these red circles? That's how the tool is moving in or plunging into material. And in this case, the tool will fit into the hole, but it won't fit when we're ramping at too wide of a diameter. So see this helical ramp diameter? First thing I recommend to folks when you get an adaptive toolpath that isn't going where you want, is drop that down to one thousandth of an inch. Again, effectively taking it out of play. And now, we've got that extra toolpath happening right down there at the bottom that's going to open up. And you can see, because it's actually pretty cool, the graphics aren't always a perfect representation because of the way graphics cards and the software uh, generates the, the visual of the toolpath. But in this case, you can see that the really crude tolerance that we set in the passes tab of 10 thou is why we're getting this really jagged circle. We'll reduce that here when we're done. We think our toolpath is, is good. Do a quick simulation. And once we get to the end of this simulation, I really emphasize this. Turn off the visibility of your CAD model. Okay, so we're done with the simulation. If yours looks different than mine, the big change here is I've changed the mode to tail. So I only see the last little bit of a toolpath. Turn your model on and off. That's really important because you can see sometimes if there has been some sort of a mistake. Unlikely with the 3D tools because they obey the solid model, but nevertheless, good to know. So why didn't we plunge through there? Go download from the Fusion 360 app store this thing called Visual Styles right there. What that does is it gives me this list of options. I can quickly switch to wireframe view. Otherwise, I'd have to click on the TV and change visual style, blah, blah, blah. I love toggling quickly. If I zoom in, I've got a problem. That toolpath is not cutting low enough. And in fact, that's happening up right here as well. It's staying above this, the floor. That's no good. Why is it doing that? Because Fusion thinks 3D Adaptive is a roughing strategy and that you're going to come back and do more work later, it's not focused on doing what you would think if you're new to CAM is a logical thing, which is clean up the floor. Go to Passes, check Flat Area Detection, click OK. I actually think this is a really good setting to leave checked because more often than not, I would rather have it checked. You can't set it as a default. And right here, there's no way to right click on it like there are in these white boxes where you can say make all default, but there is a little trick. Right click on your operation, compare and edit, type in flat, and you get this flat area detection. And now I can right click on the yes and say make all default. Make default would only make it the default in this specific part. Make all default makes it uh, the default across your Fusion account. Last thing, I right clicked. And I said duplicate toolpath, created a second version. And the only thing I changed under passes is I reduced that tolerance from 10 thou or 0 0.01 down to 2 thou. And take a look at the difference in the toolpath. So at a 10 thou tolerance, we get faceting. Jump over to the 2 thou, much better, much smoother. Two last things. Oddly, this still isn't poking through the floor. And I don't know why, but I know how we can fix it. When we zoom in, it just seems like there's a micro amount of material left. It could actually be a graphics problem. It looks like it's stopping just one millionth of an inch high. Right click, edit. Under your heights tab, say model bottom, negative 0.001. Just allow it to go one thou lower. And actually, while I'm in here, I'm going to go ahead and increase that helical ramp diameter back to something that will still allow us to get in those holes, but is a little bit bigger. Larger red helical ramp, and we can now see the toolpath is going below, which is great. And our simulation looks good. One last test, turn off the CAD model. Awesome, we're good to go. If you wanna take it to the next level, what I would recommend under passes, check stock to leave. You don't need to leave any axial stock, but leave a little bit on those sidewalls, say five thousandths of an inch and then start doing 2D contours. 
to go ahead and, and do a better job of cleaning up some of those faces and walls and features and so forth. And you could do 2D chamfer and use a chamfering tool and put some nice edge break chamfers on the top of these fins. Hope you enjoyed, folks. Take care. See you soon.